Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We're going to be playing a 3v3 on Hell in a Very Small Place, so a 3v3 team game on the smallest map in all of Wargame. It's a bit of an interesting idea, but here we are. And I'm taking a South African motorized deck that, as of the time of recording, I've just made. So I made it about 5 minutes before setting up the lobby, and then joined the lobby, and here we go. So a lot of Retzel 20 Milans, a lot of Buffles, Caspiter K cars, and all of this carrying some pretty nice infantry. At least that's the hope. I also do have a little bit of base defense here with Bosvarks and some helicopter shenanigans heading around the side. We'll see if that works out. Now, my allies are playing, it looks like there's an US player. Those are just Humvees, V-150s, so that's going to be just US there. No NORAD or anything like that. And then we have Leopard 185s, Geppards, and Gazelle Canons, so that's going to be a Eurocore on my right. And Ball and I have played before, but Isonine and I have not, so it was a wonderful thing meeting the new player. And uh, I think this is an interesting thing. So three people on this map, usually if it's two people on the map, you have one player in golf each, and then one in sort of Foxtrot Bravo. And I committed entirely to Bravo. I have nothing heading forward to, Char to Charlie or Fox. And as a result, my ally here does take a bit of a beating at the beginning of the game. So there's some sort of big, heavy, mean tank here. And yeah, my allies Abrams are getting sort of outclassed. Most of those are from one opponent, it looks like, but there was other stuff if we just flick over here. Yeah, it looks like Matthew and SM0 are on that side. And then my own stuff is headed in here. We're unloading. This is kind of a big, goofy mess, and I need to figure out how to do that a little bit better, but I mean, we'll see. It's fine. And then I have Alouette K cars and an XH1 Alpha headed around the side, along with some infantry in cast beaters, and my rule vault kind of gets left behind as a bit of a defensive measure, and then something to use later on, which it's a bit of a bad habit. You don't want to have that expensive of a dead buy at the start, but that's what we've got. SU-24M bomber coming in, and that is going to be pretty mean, but a chaparral is trying to get some shots there, and that prompts an immediate Ruokat ZA HVM buy, as I don't want to be constantly hammered by bombers today. So we'll see. These guys have pretty good range against helicopters and tend to be pretty decent, I think. SAF-90 do go up a little bit ahead of the Bogomach, which was supposed to lead the way there. These guys are 15 strength. Ooh, that's not the Caspier. These guys are 15 strength for 5 points, which makes them wonderful meat shields, if not really good for that much else. And their transports are 10 points, so you do pay for it. But uh, KA-52 catches my helicopters, and I send 2 off to fight them, and then 1 over to Alpha, but unfortunately takes him down right on the edge of his range, and then takes down the 3rd as well. So... Honestly, pretty nice KA-52 work from SM-0, and now we're going to be engaging with them on this side. I have Milan teams, hopefully getting some fire support on the side, and then Rathal-20 Milans as well. And the Bogomach have encountered Motostrelki. I don't know, I have a hold now on this side, but my intention's not to be satisfied with that. I want to get up and through. SASF all the way forward, we do get some nice shots on, on that KA-52, and down he goes. So that at least was a little bit of nice revenge. If I can get the MI-24 as well... I'll feel kind of okay for how the opener went. The ZA HVM is arriving, that's 85 points, and 4,200 meter range versus air is not amazing, but it is pretty decent, 65% accuracy, 6 HE, so of course not quite able to one-shot things as it misses the critical 7 points junction. But uh, we are sparring here as time goes on and trying to shoot in the MI-24, that's one shot. SASF might be able to get the second, and yes, but they're just using crappy Strela 2M, so they need three to take this guy down and taking fire while it's going on is not great. But we take down the plane, or the helicopter rather, and uh, yeah. On the right hand side in Gulf, some uh, Geoglostai have been making life difficult for my ally on the right hand side, and he had a lot of vehicles that were pushed forward. I think I highlighted it in one of the clips and highlight videos earlier on on the channel, and basically he sent a bunch of martyrs forward and then they got wrecked by special forces. And that's sort of, this is sort of what happens when you lose your support on that side, right? So Panzergren, would have been able to engage the Geogostai with support and done fine. But as it is, J7H coming in, trying to bomb out what's left of the infantry in this section. Double squad of Panzergren 90 killed, and the Red 4 team is looking to be making some pretty decent progress on that side. It's something we're going to have to watch out for. SASF sniper team headed up this way, just trying to get eyes on and be a sneaky bastard even more. And I have managed to get some bulk up around. In the meantime, SASF trying to retreat as they have taken a bit of a pounding, and they're reasonably expensive too, 35 points. Uh, but, I mean, Elite, they have good stingers, the Apollos is of course a wonderful secondary, and I'm trying to get Bogomach up there instead. But uh, we are getting chased... Oh, easy for me to say today, holy cow. We are getting chased by some artillery, a bit more than I'd like, and my sniper team gets caught out by a Skrejit that they weren't quite able to kill, and unwisely shot at with that's NW2. And, uh, 
yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag that they have that. Nighthawk support from uh, Icene, Isonine here, and that was pretty good. I think he killed one of the two units of infantry in that town, and now we're going for it. SASF, because elite forces give your infantry wheels, and look at how quickly they're crossing the open ground there, trying to close with Modestrelki. But in the meantime, we've done reasonably well in Foxtrot. This is still an enemy hardpoint, and there have been some AA identified in the woods. Uh, we are going after it. Isonine has an M106A2, and this was my first time using Valkyrie, so I moved them forward on the assumption that, you know, you get these things closer forward, you decrease their dispersion, but I entered the minimum range bracket, so that's why they're moving back before I can get support on the, on the way. In the meantime, SASF are pretty decent for getting rid of Maelstrahlke. I mean, just the one gun, no tertiary that they can bring online, but really not too terrible, and SASF is going to be trying to support me on this side. We do get a hit there. But those annoying 10 strength helicopters, they take three shots for any and all SASF, it's pretty rough. But Bokop going around this side, and this guy is 40 points, so if I can trade an SASF for the KA-29TB, that is worthwhile. And in the meantime, I think Isonine is just trying to help me push on this side because we have found command infantry chasing with the Bokop, trying to get rid of that Conqueror's M team as well. And I really should be pushing up infantry at this point, but I was a little bit scared of the Sputznaz and wanted to make sure that if they tried to go through here, they would encounter SASF in the open ground. At least that would give me some fighting chance, if not a lot. Uh, well, yeah, anyway, that is sort of where we are right now. And this could go either way. I'd say we have a bit of an advantage on my side of the board, but a bit of a disadvantage on golf, and that sort of mirrors it. Valkyrie pounding in, and we did actually get a couple of kills there, so I'll show you guys that at the end of the game. But SU-24M Bomber coming in, trying to clear out the Bokop, does it okay job? Honestly, I'd expect it better. Uh, no actual kills there. And these command infantry have to move to escape artillery, then walk right into it. So VDV and all of that stuff, and I completely messed up here. This is a buffle that's just sort of, oh, Casper Mark II rather, that was just trying to get into the reinforcement zone and see what would shoot at it, and I forgot to keep him a little farther away than see if there's anything in that town. But now Ice 9 is moving up, Rifleman pushing that side, and there's another M1A1 HA Abrams along with a Bradley that are going to be supporting. BTR 9s, of course, will shred infantry in the open ground, and unfortunately my Bokop do get sort of isolated and killed before they're able to get much more work done. We have a cargo up here, should have had it earlier, I mean, that was probably a big mistake, I didn't have anything to heal up my really expensive infantry, which it seems like that's the theme of this South African motorized deck. There was a T-80UM spotted briefly up on the high ground, nice smoke play from the Red 4 team, trying to keep him alive as best they can, but with Isonine up and into these forests, that's going to be pretty difficult. And here's where I make a bit of a mistake, I wasn't familiar with the aim time on the Valkyrie, and so I've already targeted this section for a second artillery shot, and you can see Artie again is pinged, but uh, I was pulling in reinforcements, I was looking at other stuff, and I wasn't really aware that Isonine was pushing in here at the time. I was, you know, looking over here, I was trying to see if I could help out on this side, what needed to be done, and uh, a bit of a mistake in communication. SU-24M coming in once again, ZAHVM does take a shot and gets a hit, four strength left on him, and... Second shot takes him down very nice, MiG-25 PD trying to come in, I think he was going after my ally's Thunderbolt, that's going to be into a field of anti-air and yeah, gets taken down as well. So we really did have a large, uh, pretty capable anti-air neck this, uh, anti-air network this game, really not sure what's up with me trying to say things. Pair of Pathfinders should be pretty decent at holding these guys off, the HK-21 is a mini-me clone, so I'm turning it off now actually just to see if I could get the frag launchers online, but I think they are preferential. They were just a little bit out of range, so the Motostrelki 90 not quite close enough for me to do that. But the issue with Powder Pathfinders is, as wonderful as they are against infantry, they can't handle vehicles. So that Skrejit back there is just shooting in for free. We do get a nice, ah, oh, jeez, kill steal there from the Abrams. But the Spitznaz were taken out really, really effectively. Powder Pathfinders got some nice damage in, and then the tank support on the side. Here's the Valkyrie, yep, a little bit of friendly fire. But the HA Abrams is backing out, and 1P moving forward. And this was really a lot of pressure, so SM0, I, I kind of got the sense he was throwing everything that he could at the wall here, and we're just trying to grind right through it. So Caspar K cars giving really wonderful fire support. I like those HS404s. They're not amazing, but, I mean, hey, for, for the point cost, they're pretty good. Kind of reminds me of the old days of KT uh, rushes, even though, again, not quite as effective against armor. And there is artillery pounding in, but now we're wrapping around all the way in the woods here and should be able to have some success. In the meantime, Commandos Para pushing forward, but BTR ADAs, and these guys do have integrated supports. There are Yusuf Jundai, and the BTRs are getting a little bit ahead now, but these are Commandos Para, 
and they're just a little bit outnumbered and overwhelmed. Leopard 1A5 is being pushed forward in isolation. 65 points, you can't really afford to do that too much for too long. It is going to add up. Um, so I was getting really worried about golf at this point, and it has been counter -capped. So there's still an Iltis just in the corner of this zone, but now there's something from the Red 4 team as well. Of course, this has been counter too. Rathal 20s were getting up here. I was trying to see if I could intercept anything on this side, but T72BU is going to be ending their ambitions. BMPT as well, getting that auto cannon online. Buccaneer comes in, one shot and a miss. Second shot, bit of a hit, and third shot takes that guy down. So, uh, you yeah, know, maybe worth the sacrifice, maybe not, but 90 points of playing for well over 150. I think it's, what, 175, 180 points for the BU. And we lost the plane, but... I think that was a good centerpiece. It was really anchoring Matthew's side here when they were up on the high ground, and getting rid of it was a good thing. Caspier K cars, meanwhile, will be able to get some fire on, but this response is just crazy. Double, triple BMPT, BTR-90, even a flame tank, and they really want to purge these woods uh, of anything and everything blue for. Command infantry spotted once more, trackers moving up, and they have actually been healed, which is pretty nice to see. J7H, and that 1,000 kilogram bomb is going to be coming down right on top of... Nothing. So, a bit of a swing and a miss there, a little unfortunate for the Red 4 team in that regard. But with the H.A. Abrams supporting, this could be reasonably good, and I have a lot of vision on this side. So if you see, this is really actually pretty interesting. BMPTs are wonderful at infantry killing, right? But the Bokop 90 have some decent AP power. The SAF 90, SASF 90 have Apple losses as well, and then I have a bunch more of them on this side over here. So my intention is, these Bokop are going to take it right in the face. But we're going to move the rest around, we're going to use buffles to distract, and then we're going to isolate and kill these vehicles one by one, or at least that's the intention. One, two, three BMPTs. We take one of them down with SASF-90, double squad takes down another, only one remaining. Spetsna is there, but now they're outnumbered by infantry, and we can get some decent work done. Only real issue is that remaining flame tank, if he can get his gun online. Doesn't look like he quite could get vision this far into the woods, still just there. And now the Bokop and SASF do get the shot off. So one, two, three BTRs up, and one, two, three BTRs shot back down. Really not too terrible. Now it's just command infantry here, and if I can get some of my own forces inside these towns, we'll be having a pretty good time. Really the only thing that was missing was a bit of um, long-range anti-tank. But it looks like Ball and Ice and Nine are working together to stop k -Pow from moving over here with Yostran Dai. Really expensive uh, to have those guys drop, trapped up there by Panzergren and Martyrs. This is the sort of integrated support that you need in order to fight off infiltration attempts like that. ADAs can't stand up to Leopard 1A5s or the Panzerfaust threes. So that does prompt a bomber response. Let's see what k is going for with that J7H evac Winchester and being chased off by some AA, but a little bit of a light response on this side of the field. Pretty well aimed this time around, and down go Panzergren, stun the Martyr, 1A3, and these guys could reasonably kill a 1A5, particularly if he's slow on turning, but that first shot does get in panicked, and I'm not really sure how that's going to go, but J7, J7 coming in again, MiG-25 PD. Uh, okay, so who's chasing the A10? That's reasonable. But stunned way, way, way far over our A&A now. Look at all those missiles chasing, at least six. SU-27M does kill a couple of my rattles as I'm once again trying to get around the side. We do chase off with an SASF-90, but unfortunately no hit there, and we have given away our position a little bit. But, I mean, that's at least a good shot. Second shot coming in, and I think the either the Cactus Sov or the Cheetah C got the final kill there. So, pretty happy with that. These guys are relatively short range for their anti-jet, anti-plane missiles. But, yeah, you learn to adapt, I suppose, and that's something I'm going to have to do if I'm going to be playing more South Africa, which I think, after this game, seems like something I definitely want to do. The Rattle 20s, I'm going to be a bit of an ass here, so I'm shooting at their FOB, and these guys do incredible damage to FOBs. I mean, look at that. Already, I mean, almost half killed off of that, and they're still trying to respond. I had to manually switch over to the helicopter at this point, though, and that's an inbox hit, and down goes another KA-52, but we did pay for it a little bit, then shooting in after the FOB once again, while Bokop are clearing out Igla teams. And by this point, it's sort of the writing on the wall just a little bit, as Ice 9 has gone through. Losing control of this town usually means the end for uh, the Red 4 side of the map, because what happens is people will get recon up here, they'll get ATGMs up here, they'll use it to support a tank push over the top, and then you lose control of this section. Once you lose control of here, you've lost Bravo, probably lost Golf as well in the long run. And that's just sort of the beginning of the end. So M728 CEV smacked there by Yostran Dai, and once more Valkyrie is going in, just trying to suppress uh, k over there on the right-hand side, trying to make sure that 
when we have this advantage on the left, that ball isn't taken by surprise and we don't lose golf, which would, I mean, that would be pretty symmetrical for the loss of Bravo, and there's some Panzer Grand 90, there's some Chasseurs, but there's not a ton of meat over there still remaining. Rattel 20 is killed by BMPTs, but at least that's a lot of 60-point buys, and there are a lot of 60-point buys that might not do the best right now, given the situation as it is. I mean, if they try and come in here again, they're just going to get smacked by SASF-90. There's not enough recon on that side to eliminate them before they get their missiles off. Oh, well, missiles, apple losses, I suppose, off, and, uh... Oh, they'd really kind of struggle, and that's even if they could get over here, because remember, there's an H.A. Abrams right this way. If they try and cross the bridge, that's going to be a, uh, a big hit and not one that they want to take. I'm curious why this guy isn't shooting, though. He should have vision on the BU. Let's take a look. 22 frontal armor. He can't pen. That's max range, and he can't pen. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. The BU is such a monster. One missile away and nearly a kill, but not quite. Yak-141 is circling. My Ruavox coming up, and one Buccaneer along with the Cheetah C. Just trying to really solidify this. Cheetah C is gonna go searching for that Yak-141, but again, I'm used to the longer range missiles. If you have the 84,000 range semi-actives, that could have been a nice shot, but we go in after a 27SK, we get the kill, but we also die, and I'm actually not sure if the Ruakat got the kill or the fighter did, but Buccaneer goes in, one, two BMPTs dead. Probably the most BMPTs I've killed in a really long time, so, uh, youch. I could, I could feel the pain as a former Soviet enjoyer. Uh, in this game anyway. It was it was very uncomfortable. But T-72 BU guarding here, and this was pretty rough, so my Ruakat's trying to just cavalry rush over to the smoke, and one, two shots, two kills, third shot coming in in just a second he's done aiming. Yep, there it is. I lost three Ruakats, 120 points worth of Ruakats trying to go right down the pipe when I really probably shouldn't have. I thought I'd have more time, I thought if I could close and I could use the rate of fire to kill the BU in close range, but that is going to be uh, unfortunately not possible, and this is going to be the end of the game as our last opponent does surrender there. Very fun game as South Africa motorized. I'm going to be doing a couple more of those here coming up. 24-10 kills, 1070 losses, and everyone here on my team was relatively close to positive. Ball got some good kills toward the end that made up for the bit of a mire at the beginning. Uh, units that did well, that's going to be Casper K car, killed a KA-52 and a UAZ. That's just... That was up there at the very start. That was the initial KA-52. Very, very satisfying. SASF did reasonably well. Conquer's M team, Motostroke 90. These were the guys that were in the town fighting, I think. And let's see, other highlight units. SASF 90 seemed to have done well across the board. I even took down a Yak-141, which, I mean, you don't expect that off of infantry man pads all the time. It's nice to have them capable of being so far forward without being as fragile as a dedicated man pads team. Uh, Rattel 20s, of course, did very well. KA-52 kill on the back and killing the FOB. And the Buccaneers did all right. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Thank you all for hanging around, and we'll see you again real soon.